This is a brief tutorial on how to use Stellarium's web version. Its intended audience is our astronomy uh, laboratory class. For students who are at home and need to run the software and don't have anybody nearby to help them find its, uh, its features. So the best way to start is with Google and you locate Stellarium by putting Stellarium in the Google search window and you'll see a page like this, you just click Stellarium Astronomy Software. And then for the web version, which this uh, tutorial is about, uh, click Try the Web Version. And it will bring up a page which has uh, Stellarium in it. You don't have to install anything, and it will run very well. If you have a, a good uh, internet connection, it does use a, a lot of internet data, and it requires uh, a fairly up-to-date computer with a, with a browser that is recent. Um, the Chrome browser works great for this, as would a recent version of Firefox. So you see what happens when this comes up. You've got a night sky in front of you and a panel on the left that tells you about Stellarium, some stuff down here at the bottom. And I'm just going to take you through the features uh, of this display. I would say that the, probably the first thing you might want to do is click the three bars here at the upper left, which will make that panel on the left side go away and give you a nicer view of the sky. And then there are two uh, items down here at the bottom. Uh, one is a date and the other is a uh, location. And these would be enabled by uh, your computer to probably show where you are now, although in my computer it doesn't do that. So the first thing to do would be then to click, to click the left side, which brings up uh, your location. And, uh, and in this case, it says I'm in uh, someplace uh, west of where I actually am, um, probably because of the way the internet is handled here at the university. So what I'll do is go to the search box, and I'll type in Louisville, Kentucky. And it doesn't like the way I spell it, so maybe if I spell it right it will take me to where I am, or close to where I am, and I'll just say use this location. And now it thinks I'm in Kentucky. And the other thing I would need to do is to check the date um, and timestamp. It probably will show the actual time on your computer clock, but depending on how your computer is set up, it could be off. Um, you can click here, and then you can actually change the date and time at which um, the sky is being shown. This, is, this will be your date and time, even when you go to another location, so keep that in mind for later. You click it again and it goes away. And now what we see is the night sky uh, as we would see it if it were uh, a clear night uh, at your location. There'll be compass directions around the bottom and a horizon, uh, which you can make go away. Um, that's what one of these things down here does. So the landscape feature if you click it, we'll take it out and actually make the Earth go away so you can see below your horizon or you can click it on and you get a realistic view of the sky. And this is looking north. As we look to the north, the west is to the right, the east is, the west is to the left, the east is to the right. And then overhead would be up here somewhere. Now we can just grab it. I'm clicking with the left mouse and bringing this down. So I get a nice round view. And then I can click with the center mouse button or wheel and zoom out. And this is the whole sky as I would see overhead. Or I can zoom in and bring it around like that. And then look around my horizon so I can look to the east, southeast, see Sirius rising, and to the south like that. And if I want to make this go down a little bit, I get a bigger view of the sky. And I can zoom out or in to see more or less of the sky. And you notice there's some familiar constellations up here, too. The stars are named, and you can zoom in. And as you zoom in, you'll see more information about the brighter stars. So there's some features which you should be able to use easily down here. You can change your location. You can change your time. And then you can change whether or not the constellations are identified. So if I turn that on, there are outlines of the constellations indicated, which helps you find the patterns in the sky. If I turn that off and turn that on, I see the artistic renderings of the constellations, which you might see on an old star map. 
And I can turn that off. And if I turn this on or off, it affects how the sky looks to us so that it's particularly effective if you're looking down near the horizon. If I turn the atmosphere off, it turns the effects of light scatter uh, and solar illumination on and off. So with it turned on, it's more like what you would actually see in the sky, and, it's, and that's more effective, especially at twilight. So I would normally leave that on, leave the landscape on so you get a sense of orientation. Then you've got two grids. One is the azimuthal grid. You click that on, and this shows you elevation and azimuth. Azimuth measured left to right as you look at the horizon, elevation up and down. Or if I take this off and turn this on, I get the celestial coordinate grid. This is the astronomer's grid. It's the projection of the Earth's coordinate system onto the sky. And you can see it intersects up here at the pole, and there's Polaris right there at the North Pole. Turn that off. I can click this on, the deep sky objects, or off, to see various features of the night sky other than stars identified, and that's probably a little more easily seen. If I zoom in a little bit, go over here and look at Orion. See the Orion Nebula is right there, and if I turn the deep sky objects off, that indicator goes away. Turn it on and I can zoom in, and as I zoom in more, I see more and more detail. There's actually a, an image of the sky which appears as opposed to a map. If you look over here on the right, so zoom out, you'll see various features indicated of what we're actually looking at. And the deep sky survey image is what makes the image which you're actually looking at here with stars identified on it. The more I go in, the more detail I can see until finally it sort of breaks up into the granulation of the image photograph which, uh, which was used to make this map. And at this level you notice things are moving and that's because the sky is actually moving above us as the Earth rotates. And that's built into Stellarium, so if you look up here at your clock, you see the time's passing and the sky is moving. However, I can identify individual stars here. Let's say I want to know uh, one of the stars in Orion, so let me zoom out a little bit. So I see the whole constellation here. There's the belt of Orion. I'll get up here. Here's our famous red giant star Betelgeuse, and I'll just click on that. And we see an indication over here on the left of what that star is. And when I do that, the sky stops moving. It's centered on that star now, and that's indicated by that. So I've identified this star, and I can see more information about it here. On that. Sometimes when you identify things, Stellarium will tell you that you can see about it in Wikipedia. So here I've identified NGC 1976, it's well, 682. Um, so it's actually picked out a star within that, but if, but if I want to see more about this star, which is also known as Theta Orionis, I can click the Wikipedia link and it'll take me to a web page about that star. So some of the neat things you can do with this is look at the skies that would be in other locations. So this is for Louisville, Kentucky, but suppose we wanted to see what the sky looks like in Australia right now. So we'd go here to location. And the easy way to do that, I'm not using auto location right now. I'll click here and then I'll type Brisbane, Australia. And it takes me to that and I'll say use this location. And well, surprise, it's daylight in Brisbane right now. Still showing our local time, not, not Brisbane time. So as we advance our time, and now I can do that most easily just by changing hours here. Watch the sun move across the sky in Australia. And then when it is 3 and now 4 in the morning, our local time, it's nighttime in Australia. And I go another, night, another hour or two. And then I see the Australian sky with the large and small Magellanic clouds. And if I click on the equatorial grid, I'll see the map of the sky's coordinate system. And that's the South Celestial Pole. I can zoom in on individual features, and I can really zoom in quite deeply here. And see very, very faint stars. So there's one right there. Let's see what that is. Well, that's a star in the Gaia catalog. 
and it's actually only 14th magnitude, which means it's uh, what uh, something something like a, a million times fainter uh, than a night sky star that we would see with our naked eye. Zoom all the way out here, and let's advance the time a little more. Let's see what happens. We get around. There's Arcturus, and ah, there's a planet coming up. There's Jupiter. So let's zoom in on Jupiter a little bit. You see Jupiter with a Wikipedia link here. I can continue to zoom in on it. And as I zoom in, I'll see the satellites of Jupiter, where they are at this moment. Oh, Eo, Ganymede, and Callisto are visible here. So those are the basic features of Stellarium, and you can now you can lo locate, uh, the, see the sky from different locations. You can control what you see and when you're looking. Uh, which enables you to see what the sky looks like at any date and time, not just now, but as it was or will be uh, into the future and how it will appear at any given site. So all these features of control are available in the desktop version of Stellarium 2, although they operate a little differently. The main difference that, uh, that you'll find is that the time, which you show here, is the time for you, your, your local time, not the time at the site that you've selected over here. So you need to keep that in mind when you use it. Otherwise, it's an incredibly powerful tool, really easy to use, and highly recommended for astronomy students.